start naming items that can hit you, and chances are they all hit me. As you're probably all aware, the first DLC pack for Mario Kart 8 dropped a few weeks ago. Well, first if you don't count the Mercedes-Benz DLC from a ways back. What a weird-ass promotion. Anyway, I'm sure you all have been playing it non-stop because it's not like any other big-name Wii U titles were released recently, right? Right? I got it, guys! I finally got it! Now, I said in my last Mario Kart video that I was going to do something involving the DLC tracks, and I'm going to do that, but instead of just straight up reviewing the DLC, I decided I'm going to rank the tracks from how I like them, because what good is a YouTube video without some kind of gimmick? Right, Marth? Martha agrees. But before I do that, I have a few things I want to say about the rest of the DLC first. First, my Anime Ditto co-star, Phil, did a pretty in-depth review of the DLC over on his channel, so please go check that out because it's almost certainly a better video than this one. Second, let's talk about the three characters you get. Of course, the big draw of the DLC is Link. People have wanted a Smash Bros. style Mario Kart crossover game for a long time, and this is the first chance that we really get to get something like that and Link fits right in. Plus, I gotta hand it to Nintendo, they knew what they were doing when they decided to make Link a character. They're still kinda new to this whole DLC thing, and a lot of Nintendo faithfuls might think 8 bucks is a bit too much for some Mario Kart 8 DLC. So how do you get butts in the seat? Link. Adding a recognizable Nintendo character like that is a brilliant marketing move, and was the surefire way to get people to plop down even more money on Mario Kart 8. Bravo Nintendo! Welcome to the next gen. Along with Link, you also get Tanuki Mario and Cat Peach, both of which, as I am reminded on a near-daily basis, I predicted in my worst Mario Kart characters list. Can you literally not think of a single other character to include that you have to resort to making powered-up versions of characters playable? When can I expect Tanuki Mario and Cat Luigi to be playable alongside Mario and Luigi? Well, I sort of predicted Cat Peach. See, I said Luigi, but I probably should have said Peach because she's already got three forms in the game, and the joke would have actually been funnier that way, but I'm not... I'm not good with humor. So yes, both of these characters are complete wastes of character slots. Tanuki Mario a little less so because at least his animations are amusing. I'm still trying to find Cat Peach's purpose. But it's not about them, it's about Link, and Nintendo knew that, which is why you bought it anyway. You also get a few new carts. They're cool. I like the Blue Falcon, but I'll probably just stick with Mr. Scooty. Anyway, on to the main event. Now, $8 for 8 tracks, that is a steal, and I would have bought it even without the characters, and let me tell you, they did not skimp on these tracks. It's a great selection, and it's honestly hard for me to make this list, so instead of ranking them worst to best, I'm just kind of ranking them from least awesome to most awesome. But stop wasting time, this is my ranking of the first Mario Kart 8 DLC tracks. Number 8 SNES Rainbow Road Look, I get a lot of flack for not being a huge fan of the Super Mario Kart tracks, and I get that. A lot of people have nostalgia for that game, and it's the one that started it all. Yes, I know. But I'm sorry. SNES Rainbow Road blows. I didn't like it in the original, I didn't like it when they brought it back in Mario Kart 7, and I still don't like it here. While it is a bit better because it's at least larger to account for the 12 racers, and you do get a good sense of speed on this track, I just don't find any kind of fun in constantly bumping into people and falling off the track. It's a very pretty track, and I like the music, but I just don't like playing on it very much. It also bothers me that instead of bringing in another Rainbow Road, like from Super Circuit, as the current pattern would suggest, they just use the SNES version again. Seems a bit lazy. I know this track has its fans, and that's totally fine. I'm just not one of them. Number 7 Excite Bike Arena On concept alone, this would be one of my favorite tracks in any Mario Kart game. Making a stage out of Nintendo's first racing game? What a great idea! But in practice, it's just... okay. It's not bad, I still enjoy playing on it, but it's just okay. In order to keep with Excite Bike's original simplistic style, the track is just a big oval, with tons of ramps to pull tricks off of, like an Excite Bike. In fact, the coolest thing about this track is, every time you play it, the ramps are in different positions. This adds some variety to what would otherwise be a kind of plain track. Now, being a big oval isn't a bad thing, Baby Park is my favorite track of all time, and it's about half the length of Excite Bike Arena. 
but Baby Park is small enough to have non-stop mayhem happening at all times. This one is just a bit too big. It's more about pulling off tricks to get ahead of your opponents, and it works in that regard. Plus it has a kick-ass remix of the Excite Bike theme. It might be one of the weaker courses in the DLC, but it's still a cool idea with a cool gimmick. Number 6! GCN Yoshi Circuit I've always liked Yoshi Circuit. It's one of the more iconic tracks in Mario Kart Double Dash, even if it is a bit on the plain side compared to some of the more wild courses in that game. The idea of the track layout being the outline of a Yoshi is a really good concept, and I think it works well, and that's no exception in this game. The stage plays exactly as it did in Double Dash and DS. There's no added gliding sections or anti-gravity, it's the same old track you remember but with a beautiful new coat of paint. I really don't have much to say about it. This track is a classic, and it's been left completely intact. Number 5! Ice Ice Outpost As mentioned in my last video, winter-themed Mario Kart courses are mostly forgettable. Who really likes driving around in the snow? But Ice Ice Outpost plays with your expectations by making a winter level where you don't actually race on the snow or the ice. Instead, that's just the backdrop. The track itself is on these two big yellow and green strips that constantly intertwine. That's actually pretty cool. Unlike most Mario Kart tracks that have split paths like that, you don't just pick one and stick with it. You can pretty much change whenever you want, save for a few moments where the paths are blocked by a barrier or something. It makes every lap feel unique and is something not many tracks have ever done. It's also kind of a cramped track in a large game. When the tracks do split and you're stuck on the one path, there's not a lot of wiggle room, which can cause some classic Mario Kart moments. It's a unique track with a unique layout. Ice Ice Outpost is a winter course with a twist. Ha! Number four! We Wario's Goldmine. Wario's Goldmine is a stage that divided people in Mario Kart Wii. Some people liked it, some people hated it. I personally have always liked it. It's got a lot of big dips and turns, it feels like a minecart stage from a Donkey Kong game. In fact, why is this a Wario stage? Oh well, whatever. In Mario Kart 8, they managed to make it even better by adding one of the best anti-grav upgrades in a retro course. When you get to the section with the other minecarts traveling along the track, you go into anti-grav mode, and can actually bump into them to get a speed boost instead of just spinning out like you would in the past. While that might take away some of the challenge of the track, I like it because I am a scrub. I also like that the Shy Guy from Shy Guy Falls are also in this track mining for gold, thus proving my theory that Shy Guy are in fact slaves, and they're working for Wario. That's an unexpected twist. It's also worth noting that this is the third Wario track in Mario Kart 8, and since there's still two Wario tracks from past games yet to be reused in any Mario Kart, I kinda hope that we get one in the next DLC pack and the game just transforms into Wario Kart. Can't wait to play as Vampire Wario! Number 3! Hyrule Circuit one of the biggest draws of the DLC is the fact that several of the courses are based on other Nintendo properties, a franchise first, and perhaps one everybody wanted to see was Hyrule Circuit, based on, of course, The Legend of Zelda. And it doesn't disappoint. The track takes you in, out, and all around Hyrule Castle, where Hyrulean guards and toads for some reason cheer you on. The track is well laid out and feels like it would be right at home in a Zelda game if you could explore it. I especially like the little mini puzzle inside the castle that opens a shortcut and plays the familiar jingle if you can pull it off. But my favorite thing about the course is all the little touches. Instead of coins littering the tracks, it's rupees. Instead of piranha plants and swoopers to avoid, it's deku babas and keys. The item roulette even plays the treasure chest opening tune. It's very cool and a great bit of fan service. While I feel they could have done a little more to make it actually based on an actual location from a Zelda game, I think what they did here is still very neat, and a fun track to race around. For a first time Zelda track, Hyrule Circuit is a winner. Number 2! Dragon Driftway Of the five new courses in the DLC, only two aren't based on other Nintendo properties, and the best of the two is definitely Dragon Driftway. The course is laid out to make it seem like you're racing on top and underneath a freaking dragon! Gobblegut from Super Mario Galaxy 2, to be precise. And it's just a lot of fun. Almost the entire track is an anti-grab, so there's a lot of tight turns and opportunities to boost off of your opponents. Since you're racing on top of a twisting and turning dragon, there's also a lot of bumps and opportunities for tricks. It's so much fun! 
I also think it has a really great aesthetic. It's clearly based on Chinese culture, with the paper lamps hanging everywhere, the pergolas on the buildings, and a bunch of paintings and statues of Lakitu doing... Kung Fu? That's weird. Either way, Dragon Driftway is a great course. It's fun, it's challenging, it looks great, it may just be one of my favorites in the whole series. Wanna see what number one is? Well, break out that credit card, cause it's going to cost you. Number one, available for just $4.99. Purchase now with the Season Pass. Future DLC also on the way. Huh? Number one! Mute City. Since Mario Kart 8 was revealed and Nintendo showed off its anti-grab gimmick, a lot of fans have compared it to the F-Zero series. So it seems only natural that an F-Zero track would make it into the game, and it is one of the best tracks in the whole franchise. While not an exact replica of Mute City from any of the F-Zero games, it would fit right in if it was. As expected, the entire track is an anti-grab, with lots of twists, turns, and hills to make your way up. But that's not the best part, because the F-Zero games are so much faster racing games than Mario Kart, they decided to fill the track with the famous F-Zero boost pads at every corner to help you go as fast as possible. There's no coins littering the track either. Instead, you go through F-Zero's famous recharge paths to earn coins. The whole course is a roller coaster ride because you're constantly going faster and faster while taking tight turns and bumping into opponents. It's so much fun! It's also a beautiful looking track. I mean, they all are, but this one has so much going on in the background. You can get lost in that alone. Plus, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the kick ass Mute City Remix. They even play the F Zero post race music over the results screen. What great attention to detail! Mute City is such a well done track that it just makes me and every other Nintendo fan out there want a new F-Zero game even more. Come on Nintendo, you know you want to. You could at least give us Captain Falcon as a playable character in a third Mario Kart DLC. So there you have it, my ranking of the first Mario Kart 8 DLC. Should you buy it? Absolutely! At 8 bucks, the courses alone are worth the price, let alone the characters and carts. If I had one gripe, it's that this is the first time the retro courses are mixed in with the newer courses in the different cups. I would have almost preferred it if they would have just given us one more retro course and hold off on one of the new courses until the next DLC, to make it fit in better with the other existing cups, but it's not that big of a deal. There's still a blast to play and everyone with the game should do themselves a favor and pick it up. Hey, thanks for watching another video I've made. Now, real quick, before I go any further, I want to give a shout out to one of our fans by the name of Sean Van Pelt, who, since I started actually working on this video, donated Super Smash Brothers for Wii U to me. Well, it's, it's really cool. What a cool guy. I can't, I cannot thank you enough. So, again, uh, just thank you so much. I've had a blast playing it with uh, the rest of the crew, and expect some videos on that soon. Um, other than that, if you didn't see my last Mario Kart video, be sure to click on the little link below there. I've also, once again, linked to Phil's video. You should really check that out. It's very good. Uh, if you like this video, again, go ahead and subscribe. And we also sell t-shirts and stickers, all that kind of good stuff. I'm not going to put them on the screen this time because I'm freaking lazy, so just go ahead and click down below in the thingies to do that if there's a description down there you probably didn't know that nobody reads description but anyway yeah thanks for watching this video thanks sean for the game you're a great dude uh catch you later